Play-Doh. To make our Play-Doh like substance at home, we're gonna need two cups or about 470 milliliters of flour in a large container that we can mix it all up in. And it's important to use wheat flour because it's the gluten molecules and how they bond together in order to make the Play-Doh work. You're also gonna need about a half cup or about 120 milliliters of salt. You're gonna need about two tablespoons or about 30 milliliters of tartar powder, cream of tartar powder, and you can find that in the baking aisle at your local grocery store. Two tablespoons or about 30 milliliters of just regular vegetable oil and about one and a half cups or 350 milliliters of water. I also have out here on the table some wax paper that we're gonna use later to mix in the food coloring. And it also helps to have the wax paper so you don't get stuff all over your counter and just some sort of thing that you are going to use to mix with, like a broken spoon that I broke because I can't cook really well and it just shattered. Place the container in the sink and go ahead and add in your salt and your cream of tartar sauce. Well, it's not really sauce, it's a powder. But sauce just sounds more fun. Mix that all together. Make sure that you mix it well because you want all of the different ingredients to mix together because when we put the oil in, give it a good shake. We want to make sure that that oil is mixed in with the majority of our ingredients. Go ahead and give it a good mix. Now comes that part that you really need adult supervision because we're going to boil some water on the stove. Boiling water is hot, hot, hot. Carefully add a little bit of hot water to your mixture, and you're gonna need to stir that up as you continue to add just a little bit more water each time. And as you stir, you're gonna notice that the mixture is gonna start clumping together. That's great, that's what we wanna see. Add a little bit more hot water, continue to stir, really get in there and mix it together. You wanna make sure that the hot water is not pooling anywhere because it'll form a paste with the flour. As you mix it, you're gonna to start to notice that the mixture looks more and more like cookie dough. That's why they call it play dough. It's dough that you can play with, hooray. Now I added in almost all of the water because the measurements that I ended up having ended up being perfect. If you end up with a little bit less of a dough-like substance, you can add a little bit more water, but if you end up with a little bit of a watery mixture, go ahead and add a little bit more flour. It's okay because the salt is what's going to keep it from going bad. Then you need to let it sit for 10 to 20 minutes so that it can cool down. This is the most awesome step. If you have a small children's notice, I ended up using a spoon to get it out. We're just gonna reach in there and we're gonna take our Play-Doh mixture out and we're gonna start kneading it together because we want the entire mixture to come together and start the chemical reactions that are happening, making the gluten interact. Woo, I did not wait long enough. There my internet friends. And so this is really warm. So when you make this at home, make sure that you do this the proper way, which is waiting the full 10 to 20 minutes probably, uh, because I only waited about three because I'm impatient. And so my hands are feeling this. It is so hot. Oh my gosh. All right. So you can already see that it's making a very Play-Doh like substance. This is awesome. This is exactly what we wanted. But now how do we get the color in it without making an entire mess? All right. So I took half of my dough because I'm going to make two colors today. I'm going to make blue. Oop, can't see that right there. I'm going to make blue and red because those are the favorite colors of my niece and nephew. So I flattened out the dough and this is how you avoid getting so much food coloring all over your hands. 
Lay that on your wax paper so you don't stain your counter. And we're just going to go ahead and put a couple of drops of blue in there in the middle. And then you really need it. Now before you need this all together, it will stain. You can notice that I'm already staining my hands. And you can get a better color of whatever color you're searching for by adding more food coloring. And you just knead it completely together. Now this ends up being very safe for all of your furniture and stuff like that as long as your kids aren't going and like smushing it into your fabric because the food coloring will actually bind inside of your mixture of Play-Doh. And it won't come out. Now I'm ending up with a very light color of blue and I will make this a stronger color of blue because that's exactly what my nephew would want to play with. So at the end I end up with two balls of play-doh that I can give to my niece and nephew and which is pretty awesome. Now if you were to make this with kids you are going to stain your hands at some point, which is why the wax paper is so important so that you don't stain your counters or a table, etc, etc. Now these will stay, if I put them in a food safe container, they'll stay good pretty much indefinitely until they dry out. And then they're just going to turn to some sort of chalk like substance, which is exactly what regular commercial play-doh will do now let's talk about some of the awesome science that's behind making your own play-doh <laughs> as we mix the flour salt cream of tartar powder and the vegetable oil together we are making a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture which you can't see the individual ingredients but as soon as we add the hot water we allow the gluten proteins in the flour to become long strands and bunch together and go blah, 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 blah. And that's what makes the Play-Doh work. So I would classify making Play-Doh as a both chemical and a physical reaction because we're allowing those gluten proteins to make some, some sort of fun things going together, making the Play-Doh awesome. And because of how high the salt content is in the Play-Doh, we don't have to worry about bacteria being able to grow in the Play-Doh and making it eventually stink and making it very toxic for us. Now this recipe is totally food safe. You could technically put it in your mouth and eat it. Oh God. But it's incredibly disgusting. Don't eat it. It's full of salt. It's probably not that good for you. So join me next Wednesdays and Sundays for another fun science video with Higgins.